And here's the armchair arms. And then from this point, I would do my cleanup. Once I've d determined where everything goes. It's like the same, like I said before, I don't uh, measure twice, cut once kind of thing. So if you spend more time in this phase, it's much better than spending time in the cleanup phase and then going, oh no, I gotta redo it all. Like, especially if you're working on traditional mediums with like pens and uh, pencils and stuff, you don't wanna be erasing and ruining your paper. You don't wanna be white outing every, every, every single step of the way. You kinda just wanna, um, to, I, I'm telling you, you want to you want to figure things out before you you dive into that that part that uh part of the process. So yeah, maybe bring his leg a little bit more. This knee is going to be a little bit bigger because it's in perspective. Calf muscle. Sweet, so we got a person in a chair. But anyway, um, another another trick you could do to draw people in perspective is, like I said, you can stick, th uh, um, you know, you uh, you can stick them in a box basically and um, carve them out of a box. Let's see, I'll show you what I'm, show you what I mean. So you have. a tall box just kind of eyeballing everything actually hmm, let's uh, turn this into a different color because I don't want to get too muddled okay real quick box okay so one thing you can do Actually, before I was you draw that box, what you could do, if it helps you to visualize it, you can figure out a human silhouette on a wall, basically. I don't really use this method too much, but it, it helps you. It's like you're kind of like figuring. It's like if you have an extreme point of view. Basically, using this box around him or a, a wall uh, uh, that he's leaning up against or something to figure out where things go. Now, in uh, one thing that'll help you push your perspective is looking down on something. Keep these curves like this. Keep your curves downwards like this. Um, like on the bicep here and on the tricep and then on the eye line so you get that sense of looking down everything is curved that way and I'm put a center line in this to keep things aligned so putting a person in a box can or a, at least near a box or against a wall some kind of plane can help you figure out where to put things I want to make sure that's really curved. And then from there, I would, this is, it's pretty stiff right now, I feel at least. Uh, so then I can go do another layer and do another loose version of him and make things look quicker. I'm going to flip it backwards and check my perspective. If I get a new view on this. Um, That's pretty big, actually. There's the ball for the head. So, pretty extreme perspective on a character. Um, the another trick to keep in mind when drawing people is you have your horizon line here. And let's say you want to draw a bunch of people like uh, looking at this horizon line. So there's like a bunch of trees back here, like that, stuff like 
that. There's mountain, what have you, whatever. Okay, so you want a bunch of people walking up. Here's your person, your vanishing point, or whatever. You want to walk up, have people walking around like a crowd of people. If you draw a person, this is kind of a general rule to go by. Uh, let's say you go about draw a person like this. So here is an awesome triangle person. And the horizon line, let's say, meets at the waistline. Now, anyone you draw in the in the distance is going to hit the horizon line at that same point. So I'm just going to copy the shape. Whoop. Make a new layer. And copy the shape. And I got this guy. So let's say I want to put him a little bit further than him. So I'm going to shrink him back or just redraw it. You know, His waist is going to hit the horizon line just like the waist did here. And then the further back you go, it's the same thing. Um, I'm going to copy that guy and scale him down just like that. So now let's say I want to, you know, you can also, it works for any part as long as the uh, horizon line is uh, intersecting with the person. So I'm going to move this guy, let's say, down here. So his neck is where the horizon line hits. So I have to move these guys to that spot. And that's where you're going to, that's how you find your person in the right, pers uh, right perspective regarding the horizon line. And then, of course, you know, if you got a person up close to, then here's their, there's their head and neck and shoulders, just like that, super close. Here's the eye. Cool. Anyway, uh, next thing I was going to go over is perspective of, of odd shaped or just oddly shaped objects. So let's um, get rid of this layer. Get rid of this layer. All right. So let's say you have, look, I used a cloud in the um, one of the earlier tutorials. Let's, let's use a cloud for this because it's easy to draw real quick to get the point across. You got a shape like this. So some kind of cartoony looking cloud. Now let's say I want to put this thing in perspective. This happens all the time if you're doing like video game art and doing isometric stuff and you want to put it in isometric. This is the kind of technique I use to help me uh, uh, make sure everything's aligned correctly. Uh, so let's say we're going to be looking down at it. So I'm going to put my perspective lines like this. Just uh, So your, here's your horizon. Your horizon line is going to be way up there actually. But uh, So we're going to be looking down at this cloud. And so I'm going to put basically put it in a box, but I'm going to put it in a box with, uh, since these surfaces are kind of uh, not so geometric and they're a little bit off, um, I'm going to do cross sections of each major section. So I'm going to cro do this cross section here, a cross section here, 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 and here. So uh, let's say I want to fit it in this plane. I'm going to... I know it's uh, on the flat surface. I'm going to draw like a cross section of it. So that's that first, this guy is right here. And then I'm going to move over, I'm kind of eyeballing it here. Here's that next part. And then there's the big one. One thing to actually help you with this too is draw vertical walls like you're in a clear box. So this ellipse would be like something like that. And then there's this lump over here that will look something like this. Okay, so now I roughly have these these cross sections drawn. And I'm probably not gonna see this little one back here because this big guy's gonna be in the way. So let's let's tone this layer, layer down so I can you guys can see better and I'm gonna kind of fill this thing out so uh, like I said use uh, parting lines and center lines to help you um, see where you're going and where things match up so I'm gonna draw a center line where I think this is like think of it it's kinda of like a, a rib cage so these 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 parts right here are the ribs and then this is your 
your spine basically and I'm trying to imagine where the spine the spine basically goes like this right so it looks something like that and then I'm going to do a spine down here for this little guy so now I have cross sections of everything now you can kind of so you have that 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 and that so now you can go with an even uh, darker color There we go. And I'm going to start to darken in where, the, pretty rough because I mean, I, I'm just figuring, figuring out where things are right now. And then once you figure things, like I said, once you figure thing, where things are, you can then go put your final lines on it. This is just, this is basically just for you, just for, just for the artist, you know, to, uh, to use as reference or for a template for you to put your stuff down on top. This is very useful. In making like like let's say you're making a spaceship or something, this technique is really useful in like putting picking something that you've drawn flat into a perspective. So that shape is basically this shape here. And then from there, just kind of you can fudge some things, you know. You don't it, it, add some style to it. Keep it, keep it loose. Keep it. Um, you want it to look good, right? This might be uh, a little bit too big, but yeah, that shape. It's basically that shape. Doesn't look too much like a cloud anymore. <laughs> it's more like a blob, but you get the idea. Um, cross sectioning can. Help you fit, help you visualize where something's gonna go, and I uh, I I think they call it bi railing in um I'm pretty sure they call it bi railing when it comes to 3D uh 3D uh, modeling they they can you can do a canopy over using rails and rib cages and stuff like that. All right, so the next thing uh, I want to go over was some car car pointers. So let's make a new layer. All right, cars are really tough. Um, they are it, the cars and people are something that we look at all the time, and we know right away when something looks wrong. It's just like, and then you can't figure out what's wrong with it because we we see them everywhere, and they're 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 very uh, they're very distinct fe features. Um, so a couple pointers, and I'm not I'm not going to go into like a full rendering of a car here, but these are just some pointers to keep in mind. Uh, there are three bars to a car structure, so I'm going to draw a rough uh, rectangle um, shape to fit a car into, just like we did with that rib caged cloud thing. And I'm going to get this basic kind of wedge car shape going on. So here's your basic car uh, overall shape. Um, it's kind of a sleek looking future car. <laughs> but anyway, so um, uh, one thing to note when you have your car here, your ax uh, the, the ellipse that you draw for this wheel and this wheel back here can be uh, determined by taking a ruler and find out where you want to put your axle. So let's say this is where I want my axle to be. The way to find the right ellipse to use on, on the car is to do a 90 degree cut of that axle line. So I'm going to eyeball it here, but let's draw it in a different color so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's the line. I want to go 90 degrees like this. And that's where your car, your, your tire ellipse is going to go. That looks hideous with the green. <laughs> anyway, so same thing with the back. So we got to get this um, axle right there. Here's where the axle hits. I'm going to go 90 degrees of that. That's where.